It's so weird how there are no calls to stop and frisk young white Christian men today. So weird how we're all withholding judgment and assessing all the various possible motivations in a way that we just don't when somebody from any other religious demographic kills people. And despite the overwhelming number of terrorist attacks and mass murders in this country coming from young, white, conservative Christian men, nobody's calling on the churches and Christian organizations to take responsibility. Of course, look, I'm hesitant to talk about any of this because we're recording early on Wednesday, so we're very much still in the media holding pattern. And by the time you hear this, you'll probably know a lot more than I do now. But what we know right now is that a 21-year-old, very Christian man from North Georgia was arrested after a murder spree in the Atlanta area left eight people dead. Now, six of the eight victims were Asian women, and so the initial media assumption largely revolved around a racist motivation. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Like hate crimes against Asian Americans are skyrocketing ever since then president racist McRacist face decided to stoke the flames of hate with every passing opportunity. But when it comes to men mass murdering women, I, I feel like the default assumption probably should be sexism. I, you know, look, I don't mean to downplay the severity of the racism that Asian Americans are dealing with right now or the clear racial motivations in this crime. I, like, given the demographics of the area, it is impossible that he wasn't specifically targeting Asian people. But I find it distressingly easy to believe that the killer didn't consider it racially motivated. After all, everybody who says I'm not racist but actually believes that half of the sentence, or at least most of them do. That being said, there's been a long string now of young white guys killing women, and thus far their primary motivation has consistently been because those men were mad at their dicks. And at least so far, that seems to be the case here. Again, very early media reports to work off of, but it's looking an awful lot like a hyper-Christian loser that couldn't get laid without paying for it, getting really angry at all the harlots that tempted him away from the pure light of Jesus. The, the, the term sex addiction is getting thrown around a lot in the media. That's not a thing, by the way. Look, I, I'm no psychologist, but it's not in the DSM-5. The majority of psychologists reject it. In our long history of trying to classify sexual behavior that falls outside of the puritanical American norm as mental illness has been wrong a hell of a lot more often than right. It's a bullshit concept crafted by prudes to demean sexual freedom and perpetuated by politicians who want to make extramarital affairs sound like something they can overcome with their gumption. At its best, it's a pathway to sexual anxiety and repression. At its worst, it's the motive for a murder spree. But it's also the inevitable result of Christianity's effort to control and repress people's sexual urges. If you're told from before puberty that you shouldn't touch yourself and you shouldn't watch other people touch themselves and you shouldn't want to touch yourself every time you think about watching other people touch themselves, post-pubescent you is left with two options. Either you can jettison the bullshit belief structure that told you a natural, healthy sex drive was sinful, or you can live your life feeling that you're broken and unworthy of God's love. And of course, the hope of the church is that you land on that second choice. Keep in mind, this is not a byproduct of some other goal. This is not a side effect. This is the reason they promote this repressive, puritanical bullshit. The whole purpose is to reinforce this fiction that you're born with the lingering stench of sin. And no matter how moral your choices, no matter how ethical your actions, you are a den of transgressions and shortcomings, and you always will be. You are broken, and only Jesus can fix you. Hell, even he can't fix you. The best he can hope to do is hold you together until you die. And to achieve that, they use the same method as any totalitarian government. You just take something that everybody's doing and you declare it illegal. And it's the same way that America uses drug laws until white people start doing that particular drug. Ideally, you take stuff that people couldn't stop doing even if they wanted to. You create an impossible minimum expectation and then you load a motherfucker up with guilt every time they fall short of it. Hell, in this case, they even add an omniscient being that can see every transgression, even if you don't get caught. Hell, even the ones you don't make, right? Because with Christianity, even temptation to sin is enough to trigger the guilt. Where a sane person would see overcoming that temptation towards an indecent act as a sign of moral fortitude, Christianity still defines that as a failing. Even wanting to sin is a sin. 
Now, I guarantee goddamn to you that we're going to spend the next week or two here in Pundit's retreat to their partisan corners to blame their villain du jour. And some of that's going to be legitimate. Much of it's not going to be. But virtually nobody will talk about the elephant in the fucking room. Virtually none of them are going to talk about the sexual repression that sits at the very heart of fundamentalist philosophy, which is weird because they'd sure as hell do that if the shooter's dad was an imam.